All right, so I no longer need the grid. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. And I just kind of want to go through and, and take a look so I can already see I've got kind of a weird gap happening right there. If you try to bake this, it's going to cause significant problems. So I just need to do a little bit of a cleanup here. I'm going to go ahead and um, basically just double click. So I guess I should back up a little bit. So right click the object. I'm going to, um, sorry, just select the object, right click, and then go to faces. And then you can, you know, double click and it'll grab the entire element. So I'm just going to scoot this in so that I don't have any more big gaps anywhere. And in fact, I might even come in because this what's happening here looks a little strange to me. I don't really want to create a whole lot of additional work for myself on the retop end, but I think that little crevice there will be won't be that big of a deal. So I'm just going to do a quick little scan here. Because you definitely, uh, generally speaking, like those kinds of things, the artist it'll it'll just ruin your day, and if you make the tiny tweak to correct it, nobody is going to notice and it's going to be totally fine. So you can make your lives easy. I uh, encourage you to do that. I can see here there's actually a gap right in there. So what I'm going to do to address this area is I'm actually just going to retop a quick little piece to go inside there so that I don't have to worry about it. Because um, actually messing with this geometry is it's kind of painful. I don't know, maybe I'll just give it a shot here. So just doing some shift select double clicking. Try to grab all of these components. Don't want to forget any of this stuff. I think that's everything. I'm going to go to my right view. Because again, I want to make sure I'm actually solving this problem. We're not creating too many new issues for myself. So I'm just trying to keep that, that little gap there relatively consistent. Okay, beautiful. That's great. No big deal. And then finally, these little pieces here, they're kind of cool. I was going to delete them, but I actually think they look like they might be little Amy things or whatever. So I might hang on to them and we'll just kind of reposition them a little bit. Again, the goal here is to make this your own thing. Obviously, uh oh. All right, so these surfaces are rendering black, which means there's, I was worried there was a gap there, but this is probably just a normal issue. Hmm, got a gap there too. I'm glad I'm doing this little look here. All this, these little things here are going to cause trouble. And when you get to baking, so I'm just going to go ahead and scoot it back. And I'm going to expand it so we don't have any gaps there at the edges. Like in here. I make sure I don't go so far that I crash through anything. You can kind of see it right there, but hey, look at that. We'll just scoot these back a little bit. Problem solved. So what I want to do now is actually look at the normals for this geometry. It won't really impact anything for retop, but it's just going to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So I'm going to go to mesh display. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to unlock the normals. You can see automatically that I just fixed it. Um, the normals will be locked randomly when they come from other applications from time to time. Generally, Maya, I don't think, does lock the normals, but basically just means if they're locked, you can't really change them. So the first thing you got to do is unlock them. And then we're just going to, I mean, we could just leave it alone at this point, but, uh, you know, you could soften the edges and you can see that it gets all squishy looking because it's trying to do a smooth shade over a bunch of nasty triangles. Um, you can set everything to hard, which will be okay, except where you have round things where you're going to get this faceting, which we definitely don't want because that will show up in the bake. And then the happy medium is going to be soften harden edges and that just uses kind of a default value of like if there's less than whatever it is 30 degrees between the faces it'll soften them and if there's more than 30 it'll give you a nice hard edge and you will end up with this shading perfection so that's a win 
All right, so at this point, I think the geometry looks like that's that's kind of annoying, but I might just have to live with it, just how close that is to the edge there. Again, I don't want to do a, a nonlinear scale on this thing, which would be like one of these numbers here. Even though I get more space, these are no longer as round as I want them to be, which is very, very round, because I'm probably going to end up using a, um, well, I don't know. Honestly, I'll probably just go flat across that surface because it's going to be a giant pain to try to, um, retop all of those little circle things and the normal map will catch it well enough well, I don't know we'll have to see how it goes so all right um, I think I'm ready to get going I kind of wish I had something for this little spot here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video for a second and I'm gonna go grab something that fits in there because like a vent or something I'm sure I can find something um, and then I think that this will be ready for retop. So one second. Okay. So found this little piece there. think it looks pretty good. Got it integrated in. And I think that's going to work real nice. Okay. So now we want to go ahead and begin the process of retop. So as I'm looking around here, I just kind of want to make a note of what I may want to retop as a separate object. And I'm specifically thinking maybe these guys here. And the reason this is a good candidate is there's no relationship between the cylinder and this flat plane in the high poly. Like if there was a uh, some kind of a fillet or like a blend here, if this is welded in and like there's some sort of a transition, then you would want to make sure that your geometry captures that transition. Uh, so, uh, sorry, your low poly so that you, you don't get a hard line there. You get a nice clean bake. But because there isn't one there, I can just basically treat this as a separate cylinder. And then I don't have to blend all of these, like all of these edges that are going to be required for the cylinder into this flat plane and all the features here. These little bolt things here are pretty well integrated in. Let me hop into uh, just the regular shade of view. So I don't even need to worry about retopping any of these. I'm just going to go right over the top. But like in this, there's a lot of scenarios where you might have a bolt sitting inside uh, like a, a, a recessed area like this. And in those cases, you probably want to do the bolt as a separate object just because it's going to be so difficult to get in and retop the, the, the crevice between the bolt and the, and the recess. But I don't, I guess I, I kind of picked wisely for me, but poorly for the demonstration because I don't have any of those features, but you you may end up with something like that. So I will be uh, you know on hand to discuss the details of, of everybody's individual challenges. Everything that you pick is going to sort of present a unique set of issues to solve. Um, so anyway, I guess probably we're about the, at the end of this video and, and I'll jump in with the actual retop in the next video.